Hi, welcome to our channel of IGNU Audiobooks. Indira Gandhi National Open University, School of Continuing Education, Bachelor's Degree Program, Elective Course, Rural Development, BRDE 101 Rural Development, Indian Context, Blocks, 5O and NGOs in Rural Development, Unit 1 Voluntary Efforts and NGOs. 1.0 Aims and Objectives the nature of rural problems is multidimensional and issues and components related to rural development are complex in nature. Therefore multi-agency approaches required for its solution and achievement of the objectives related to rural development. In this context efforts of voluntary organizations become significant. The objective of this unit is to acquaint the learners with the efforts made by voluntary organizations and non-governmental organizations in the field of rural development. It will also highlight their contributions in the process of rural development. After going through this unit, you will be able to explain the meaning and importance of voluntary organizations. The difference between voluntary organizations and non-government organizations. The role of voluntary organizations in rural development, and the role of non government organizations in the process of rural development in India. 1.1 Introduction It is almost a reality now that government alone cannot bear the responsibility for undertaking the developmental tasks in the rural areas. For rural development, it needs a complementary set of infrastructural and organizational support base that can activate the human factors in the development process. Our experiences of more than three decades of development planning have shown us that the goals of gradual reduction and ultimate reduction of poverty have not been realized as envisaged by the governments. Therefore, it would not be out of context to conclude that there are some missing links in our approach to development. The question on which we intend to focus our attention is to what extent the involvement of if the voluntary agencies can provide these links, to what degree can they succeed in making a dent on poverty and other problems, in the rural areas? At the same time, we are well aware that they have from some limitations also. Later on, we will also discuss these shortcomings. At first, we will make efforts to conceptualize it so that you can understand what exactly is meant by voluntary organizations. 1.2 Voluntary Organization Meaning voluntarism is the basis on which the VOs function. Therefore, we will attempt to understand what it means. For example, if you are going to a village and your car meets a villager who is walking on the road and going to the same village, you stop your car and offer to take him with you. In this case your offer to him without his asking will be called a voluntary action. Similarly, agencies slash organizations whether its workers are paid or unpaid, are initiated and governed by its own members without external control. The following features which are true for almost all voluntary organizations will enable you to comprehend the meaning of voluntary organizations. 1. The interest and needs of the people whom a voluntary organization serves is held above all other interests. 2. The VOs do not expect anything in return from the people after whatever services they render. 3. The members of VOs have a sense of commitment, dedication and selfless services. 4. The VOs work usually for the poorest of the poor. 5. The rationale of voluntarism is based on social consciousness i.e., creating awareness among the people, and 6. Dash the people are given a chance to be actively involved in action program, which is decided by both the members of the VOs and the people for whom it is meant. Criteria Planning Commission has laid down certain criteria which govern the existence of voluntary organizations. These are as following. i. It must be a registered society under the Registration of Societies Act. 1860, or equivalent enactment of states. 2. It must be based in rural areas and worked there for at least four to five years. 3. It must have professional and managerial expertise to produce regular audit statements and reports for funds received from government. 4. It must not be linked directly or indirectly with any political party, and one holding public office through a process of election, is not qualified to represent voluntary organization. V. It is explicitly committed to secularism, socialism and democracy, and it must declare that it will adopt only legal and non-violent means for rural development purposes.
Why? It must implement anti-poverty, minimum needs and socio-economic development programs designed to bring awareness levels of families living below the poverty line and leading to an improvement in the quality of their lives. 1.2.1 Types of Voluntary Organizations But on the basis of their approach and functions, the VOs can be broadly classified into following categories. I. Welfare Organizations These aims at meeting the minimum needs of the community like food, shelter and also for providing facilities like education, health, water, etc. Often these organizations are managed by religious institutions and charitable trusts. 2. Relief and Rehabilitation The organizations which respond to the problems arising out of natural calamities, floods, drought, famine, and man-made calamities, fire, ravages of war, communal riots. Their functions continue till the victims are rehabilitated. 3. Activist organizations, these are the radical form of organizations. The personnel involved in such organizations believe in social actions. Their main function is to non-scientist people and assists them in talking necessary actions to solve their problems. Though there are not parameters universally acceptable for the classification because a particular category of organization may can have the characteristics of all the other categories. 1.2.2 VOs and non-governmental organizations, NGOs A serious confusion exists in the conceptualization of VOs and NGOs. To avoid this, it is necessary to understand the differences between the VOs and NGOs. It has been observed that some authors include the NGOs under the blanket of those while others treat the NGOs as distinct from the VOs. This is mainly because both have one thing in common, i.e., voluntarism. In the context of rural development when we talk about the VOs, the NGOs are, generally included. The differences, however, remain and cannot be overlooked. In fact the NGOs are the interface between the voluntary agencies and the government. Let us briefly go through them. Voluntary Organizations 1. Initiated and governed by Its own members Non-governmental organizations 1. Initiated and governed by the Government Voluntary Organizations 2. Appointment of the staff is done by the Governing Board Non-governmental organizations 2. Appointment of staff is made by the Government Voluntary Organizations 3. Salary to the staff is paid as determined by the governing board. Non-governmental organizations 3. The staff is paid by the government. Voluntary organizations 4. Funded mainly by the donor agencies. Non-governmental organizations 4. Receive funds from the government. Voluntary organizations 5. Can have new strategies and policies as and when need arises, but this can be done only with the approval of the governing board. Non-governmental organizations, 5. The changes in policies and strategies are subject to the change in the policies and strategies of the government. Voluntary organizations. 6. They have neither trade unions nor political affiliations. Non-governmental organizations. 6. They can be unionized and politicized outside the government sector. Check your progress 1. 1. What do you mean by FOS? 2. Differentiate voluntary organizations with non-governmental organization. 1.3 The role and functions of the VOs. The country's social and economic problems are so vast and multifarious that the government's administrative machinery alone cannot tackle them. Shifting emphasis on the development of private sector and shrinking in the government's control over public sector and social sector. The gradual emphasis on the establishment of a self-reliant society is clear indications that people's dependence on government be curtailed. Moreover, the meaning of development has become wider to encompass the involvement of humans. There is a stress on qualitative rather than quantitative change. It includes the involvement of the masses in the process of decision-making in the economic, social, political and cultural spheres. In the context of rural development it does not mean just a cluster of benefits given to the people in need, but rather a process by which rural people acquires a greater mastery over its own destiny. It comprises only such changes in economic life which are not forced upon it but arises by its own initiatives from within. In the light of the above, facts, we can conclude without any dispute that those are the appropriate agencies for creating the right type of climate for change and development.
one might even say that woes have an edge over the government also because of their certain characteristics. Now if O1TS will be made to acquaint you with their characteristics, the woes, being small one and independent of bureaucratic and hierarchical constraints, are flexible to a great degree. They can respond swiftly and efficiently to the local demands. Being locally based, they are aware of the local environment and are responsive to it. They can adapt their style of working to the changing rural conditions. They generally employ people from local areas who are familiar with local conditions and problems. Voluntary agencies go in search of new needs or unmet needs. And having discovered them struggle to meet them in their own way. They have required resources to create public opinion and if necessary they can mobilize the state to act. They can play a meaningful role in three ways. I. To catalyze the rural population towards developmental approach. 2. Build models, experiment with new programs and act as innovators, and 3. Represent the people of the area by identifying themselves with the local needs and aspirations. The VOs are supposed to be potentially superior to official agencies in three respects. A. Their workers can be more sincerely devoted to the task of reducing the sufferings of the poor than government staff. B. They can have a better rapport with the rural poor than government employees, and C. Since they are not bound by rigid bureaucratic rules they can just read their activities quickly as they following as they learn from experience. You may be aware of or can recall the important role played by the VOs in certain areas, like the following need no overemphasis. Arranging for proper wages to the landless laborers. Striving to stop humiliation and all kinds of exploitation of the Horigen families and other socially disadvantaged groups. Rehabilitation of the bonded laborers. Spearheading anti-dowry campaign, and fighting against many social evils. In the foregoing analyses you have seen the potential role of the VOs mainly based on structural advantages. The more important, in fact unparalleled functions to the VOs in involving people in the process of development. The other tangible and unique functions of the VOs are extension method and training which we will take up now. You are listening to this audiobook on Audio Learn Agnu. 1.3.1 Extension Method and Training Extension method is one of the main planks for rural development experiments among many voluntary organizations. It is intended to facilitate the diffusion of the result of science and technology for use among the rural population. Its uniqueness lies in demonstrating the benefits of scientific result at the doorsteps or in the living environment of the target groups. The method is identified with agriculture, health, nutrition, rural industries and home management tangible changes have been noticed in the agricultural practices of small and marginal farmers in the terms of crop diversification, cattle rearing, irrigation uses added non-conventional energy utilization, etc. Training is also one of the important functions of VOS. The VOS have made use of training as an essential input in rural development be it for the development of functionaries engaged in rural reconstruction work or for the augmentation of the technical skills and knowledge of the client group for self-employment. Owing the early stages of the implementation of community development projects, some of the categories of development functionaries of the government were trained at the voluntary organizations such as Gandhi Gram Trust and Kasturba Trust. In states like Maharashtra, the training of Panchayati Raj functionaries at the village level has been entrusted to the voluntary organizations. Some of the voluntary organizations have taken up the TRISM scheme with good results. Now governments have made provisions to roll over for training purpose. 1.4 Council for Advancement of People's Action and Rural Technology Kapat The Council for Advancement of People Action and Rural Technology Kapat, was the setup as a pioneer organization in September, 1986 as a nodal agency by merging two organizations, namely, People's Action for Development, India, PAD, I, and Council for Advancement of Rural Technology, CART, with a monda to promote voluntary action and propagate appropriate rural technologies for the benefit of rural masses. Since then, it has been contributing by involving people in the development process through VOS to supplement the government efforts. 
Pad I had its origin in the Freedom from Hunger campaign launched by the PAO in 1960. It was registered in 1973 as a society under the Societies Registration Act. Pad I mainly funded agricultural and animal husbandry programmers. It was receiving funds mostly from foreign agencies. Pad I also helped small and marginal farmers landless laborers and rural artisans by providing them integrated services for increasing employment, production and income, and organizational services for distribution of agricultural inputs. CART, the organization which merged with PAD, I, to form CAPAT, promoted development of appropriate technology for use in rural area and facilitated several organizations active in the field of research and development. It is also contributing in the dissemination of knowledge or rural technology to manufacturers of machinery, tools and equipments. Objectives The activities of both CART and PAD, I, have been incorporated in the chapters of CAPAT. The objectives of CAPAT are as following. To encourage, promote and assist voluntary efforts in the implementation of projects for the enhancement of rural prosperity with a focus on injecting new technological inputs to act as the national nodal point for coordination of all efforts for the generation and dissemination of technologies relevant to rural development to act as a catalyst for development of technologies appropriate for rural area by identifying and funding research and development efforts by different agencies particularly the VOs to act as a conduit for transfer of appropriate technology of government departments, public sector undertaking, cooperative societies, VOS and the general public. To act as a clearing house of information and as data bank. To disseminate knowledge on rural technology to the manufacturers of machine, tools, equipment etc. so that large-scale production is carried out. To promote, aid. Maintain and coordinate projects slash schemes aimed at all-round development, creation of employment opportunities, promotion of self-reliance, organization and improvement in the quality of life of the people living in rural areas. To conduct or sponsor training programs for trainees, particularly in the voluntary sector so that improved technology is disseminated to participate in developing in rural areas. To conduct or sponsor training programs, seminars and workshops to promote interaction between government agencies and voluntary agencies working in the field of rural development and technology, and to prepare, print and publish papers, periodicals and books in furtherance of the objectives of the society. Activities CAPART provides financial and technical assistance to a number of schemes. These are as following. I. Promotion of voluntary action in rural development, motivating VOS to take up work under various poverty alleviation programs for which assistance is available from the CAPAT is an important concern. Under this scheme income generating activities like structure, dairy development, village industry, minor irrigation, fodder production and social activities such as health care, education, credit management and drought are supported. Too. Organization of Beneficiaries The scheme provides assistance to voluntary agencies for organizing awareness camps and for conscientization of rural poor beneficiaries of poverty alleviation programs. The scheme has three components training of social animators b. Organization of awareness camps c. Selection of rural organizers. 3. Development of women and children in rural areas. Dgra. Under d. Backslash VCRA. The activities taken up are dairying, tailoring, knitting, food processing and weaving, among many others. 4. Rural Landless Employment Guarantee Program, RELEG. The projects under this scheme relate to construction of housing, water harvesting structures, tanks percolation ponds, roads, social forestry and soil and water conservation. V. CAPART encourages VOS to take up projects under the Accelerated Rural Water Supply Program, ARVSP, 
It provides assistance to projects in pursuance of the objectives of the technology mission on drinking water. Why? Central Rural Sanitation Program, CRSP, under CRSP projects are sanctioned to carry out sanitation-related works in villages. Some of the major programs of Kapat are as, Watershed Management 2, International Funding 3 Initiatives in Disaster Mitigation 4, Marketing Development Division 5 New PC Scheme Y, Awareness Generation Program. 1.5 People's Participation Participation necessarily means direct involvement of the people and not indirect involvement through representation. Participation must be understood in terms of participation in 1. Decision making 2. Implementation of development programs 3. Monitoring and evaluation of the programs and 4. Sharing the benefits of development 1.5.1 Factor Determining People's Participation we shall now take a look at some of the factors which facilitate people's participation. 1. Extent to which programs are based on felt needs. A program can be successful only when it is based on assessment and articulation of the needs by the people. For instance, a VOS program of popularizing nutritious low-cost weaning foods is likely to have a limited success if this is not perceived as a need by the people. 2. Motivation and Leadership the community worker are required to have potential to enthuse and motivate the people into desirous to participate in the programs and to convince them of benefit that they will accrue. He must have credibility and the qualities of leadership. Encouragement for democratic leadership can go a long way in promoting people's participation. 3. Communication The community worker must communicate with the people a medium which he can understand. It is possible that different programs and target groups would require the use of different media. You are listening to this audiobook on Audio Learning Gnu. 1.5.2 Factors Affecting People's Participation In the above analysis we have seen the meaning and the process of people's participation. Here, an attempt is made to reveal the factors affecting people's participation in a democratic country like India. In this context the National Seminar on Organizing the Unorganized Rural Labor held at the National Labor Institute, Delhi in 1984 has identified factors which are inhibiting people's participation. These are as following. I. The coercive power of the propertied class whose aim is not to relieve poverty, rather the country, to make sure that the incomes of the masses are kept low and social services restricted to them. 2. The complex relationship between the economic dependency of the poor on rich and the heterogeneity of the poor and weaker sections of India's society. 3. The inbuilt bias of the local law and order machinery to maintain the s 2 quo. 4. The lack of supportive legislation and also non-implementation of the existing social legislations enacted in favor of the poor. V. A negative and repressive attitude of the lower echelons of the bureaucracy and misuse of legal and administrative power against the organizers of the poor. Apart from these factors the will of the ruling elite or the social leadership contributes significantly in the proc underscore s of development of the poor people. It has been opined that the present programs of poverty alleviation need to be complemented by group ventures of rural poor and collective action by these sections. When the poor themselves become conscious, improve their educational capabilities and are organized, the objectives of participative strategies for removal of poverty will be fulfilled. Check your progress too. 1. Describe objectives of Kapat. 2. What do you mean by people's participation? 1.6 Woes and Government. As you have seen, government's recognition of the role of woes is based on the following premises. Government alone cannot mobilize all the resources needed for the meeting of people's needs. The quality and efficiency of government-sponsored programs increases when people are involved at different stages of program i.e. planning, implementation, and evaluation. Voluntary agencies complement very well in the development endeavors of government by filling gaps in terms of geographical coverage, program needs and community mobilization. 
voluntary agencies strengthen the community's capacity to develop and recognize the potential to take up development work which is sustainable and meets local needs. The main instruments through which government promotes voluntary action are Official Policy Statements As we have seen, the plan documents have, as a matter of policy, indicated promotion and support of voluntary effort as an important aim, involving non-officials in commissions, study teams, committees, working groups etc. set up by different ministers or the government for policy planning and implementation. Such involvement of experts, public figures and social workers is now a common practice. Giving grant and aid to those for implementing programs identified for the purpose. Various ministries and departments both at the center and in the state sanct job grants in aid to a large member of those. Allowing community-based organization for participation in local level planning. Giving clearance for grants and aid to those form foreign donor agencies, where this has been considered necessary. Helping those to improve their skills and knowledge by organizing training and formulation of programs and projects. 1. Seven Limitations of the Vos It must be admitted that Vos can do very little in the area of development to which require massive action in term 1s of human and financial resources. They are equipped to operate on a limited, demonstrative and pilot basis. In a country of India's dimensions, the voluntary agencies can at best provide only a starting point and the impetus. The following are some of the glaring shortcomings. I. The territorial development of voluntary organizations has not followed uniform. Pattern majority of the organizations are concerned in eastern and western regions. Two. Inadequacy and lack of certainty of the inflow of funds. 3. The number of woes which are actively engaged in rural reconstruction with headquarters in rural areas is very limited. 4. The organizations which are dominated by charismatic leaders tend to show signs of decay when the leaders leave the organizations. V. Misuse of funds and improper accounting are major limitations of woes. Why? The functioning of the most of the organizations at the local level lack national awareness and their influence in government circles are insignificant. 7. Vos do not get adequate support from bureaucracy and local leaders. 8. They face organized opposition from the powerful and the rich. This happens only with urban and the rural elite who feel that the Vos pose real and potent threat to their position of power. 9. Lacks of professionalism. The rural-based voluntary agencies suffer from inadequate availability of trained specialists and workers. 1.7.1 Strengthening Voluntary Effort Now you are familiar with the role of woes, their strengths, and some of their problems. You should also know some of the measures that could be taken to improve the situation. In this section we shall take a look at the suggestions for promoting and strengthening voluntary effort. Some of these are as following. The leaders should sincerely promote voluntary efforts. Industrialists, professionals and the academic community should demonstrate their commitment in this regard. This will provide important insight into the developmental problems particularly related to rural development. There should be a radical change transformation in the attitudes and dealing of the bureaucracy with woes. Grants and aid programs should be widely publicized among those and assisted in applying for these grants since many of them have little experience in this regard. The flow of grants and aid is affected if there are no agencies to take them. Hence, special efforts at promoting voluntary efforts should be made in those states or areas where voluntary agencies are non-existent. The system of grants and aid should be streamlined and simplified. Grants must be released in time as delays create problems in providing services and functioning of the staff. Vos must take a conscious effort to improve their own organizational structures and administrative competence, including accounts and housekeeping. They must develop competence not only in problem-solving and prompting development but also in motivating and sensitizing people and building capacity of the community for problem-solving and sustainable development.
there must be greater coordination among NGOs and VOs to avoid duplication of services. A coordinating council for voluntary organizations will be useful for providing a forum for collaboration and cooperations. It can jointly take up the issues with the government. Training policy must be implemented by VOs, as motivation is not enough. A professional approach is always able to achieve better results. Programs of VOs must be documented and widely disseminated so that society may be in better position to assess their endeavors. This VOJ AD also serve as resource material for others. 1.8 Let US sum up. Voluntary efforts have significant role to play in the development as it shows how vibrant a society is in trying to solve its own problems. In this unit we have discussed the concept, meaning of voluntary effort and its main features. We saw how VOs differ from NGOs not only in the matter of their origin and sponsorship but also in terms of their funding, autonomy, style of functioning etc. We gave a brief account of Kapat, an NGO set up by the Government of India, to promote voluntary effort and people's participation, facilitate development and transfer of technology relevant to rural areas. We have identified the main sources of strength of voluntary f 01 zars commitment, dedication, flexibility, ability to respond to local needs close. Interaction with the community etc. We have also emphasized the problems and shortcomings of VOs. We saw that the government recognizes the complementary role of VO and provides grants in aid for implementing priority development programs. We indicated steps that need to be taken to strengthen voluntary effort. 1.9 Keywords Activists group of persons who believe that social problems can be solved only through enabling the exploited masses to take action against their exploiters. Social legislations, dash the laws that the formulated to abolish social evils like dowry and untouchability, and to guide certain social functions like marriage, adoption etc. Thank you, we will see you in the next video.